Oh, no problem. I appreciate it. Hey, guys, how you doing? How's it going, Coach? Yeah, doing, doing good, doing good. Well, just really, this uh, week's been a fast start, just getting everything acclimated, you know, with doing the Zoom meetings with the staff and the offensive staff and trying to hit it full speed recruiting. So I haven't moved to Columbia yet, but uh, as soon as these restrictions are lifted, then I'll be headed down to get going full speed in Columbia. But also excited about this opportunity uh, to join Coach much Jeff and his staff and obviously you guys are where I'm from South Carolina and the opportunity to be you know near my parents down in Wagner so you know everything's come full circle and uh, really excited about this opportunity. So if you raise your little hand and of course uh, David will be the first one here. How's it going coach uh, David Kloniker with the Post and Courier good to meet you. Yes sir same here. Just uh, looking at it, I know you're already out there recruiting. Uh, how difficult is it to recruit in the age of coronavirus, especially being a new guy on the staff? Well, you know, one thing that's helping me in this transition is that a lot of the area I was already recruiting prior at NC State or even when I was at Vanderbilt. So a lot of the coaching contacts I've already had. Um, now it's just understanding the board of what South Carolina, who their targets are, you know, it may not have matched up with other places I've been, but so just hit the ground running, um, reestablish some contacts with some coaches you may have talked to in a couple of weeks or months and uh, having those kids that's now on the South Carolina board, knowing who I am and where I'm at now. So that's been the focus this week. All right, next up will be Pete Acabelli from the Associated Press. Go ahead, Pete. Uh, hi, everybody. Just hope everybody's well. Des, I can tell you how old I am in that I talked to you when you were at Furman. Uh, a couple of decades ago. Uh, yeah. Welcome. Welcome to South Carolina. Just if you can expand how difficult it's been in this era to try and connect. I mean, in, in another time, you'd be in the, you know, in the facility, getting to know everybody. H has it been hard? How have the challenges been in, in, in kind of making yourself known to the guys? Well, you know, with the staff, we've had our Zoom meetings. The, the issue right now is that our players are in final exams, so we're not allowed to have Zoom in, meetings with them currently. So until after May 7th, when I can start getting back and uh, meeting with those guys, obviously I can call my current players, have FaceTime calls with them, but I can't have any Zoom football meetings. Uh, so looking forward to doing that. But it also allows uh, myself to get the, the terminology down to the offense. That's what we've been spending our mornings doing as offensive staff is going back through spring installs and getting me caught up to speed, and I spend afternoons recruiting. All right, we'll go back to uh, David Kloninger. David? He's on mute. mute. Yep. Sorry. Did I lose him? No, he's still muted. There you go. All right, there you go. Uh -huh. Sorry about that, Des. Um, you mentioned that you have, or you are able to talk with your current players. How many meetings have you had with your uh, running backs and the guys that will be in your room? I haven't had any because my start date coincided with the you know final exams. So it's just been telephone calls. Uh, so we haven't had any football meetings yet. Go to Addie Weaver. Mitch, Mitch Brown here. Uh, I'm using her computer. Oh, okay. uh, how you doing, Coach? Nice to meet yeah, you guys. You, Hope you guys are doing well. Uh, I'm not sure if you answered this already, but just what was it about? Obviously, you're from South Carolina, but what was it about uh, the University of South Carolina that kind of sold you on this job and, and was kind of the next step you wanted to take in your career? Well, you know, again, being in Raleigh is three hours from Columbia, and I've been up there for eight years and have competed against South Carolina on recruits. Obviously, we played against – South Carolina, my time there back in uh, 2017. And then you're just seeing the growth of the program with facilities, you know, the things that uh, Coach Muschamp's trying to, to do here and the guys he brought along on the staff. I mean, the SEC speaks for itself for the type of conference, um, competitive conference every Saturday. So as a coach, we all want to be in the most competitive environment we can be in. And this allows me opportunity to do that. Go to Jeff Owens. Hey, Coach, how, how are you? Welcome. Good. Um, wondering, um, I, I'm sure you've gotten a chance to look at some film where you're running backs and just wondering how you would evaluate that unit and, and what you have to work with. 
Yeah, so I have been able to watch some. And, you know, obviously I think Marshawn is as advertised. So I look forward to working with him. Um, I saw some growth, you know, it was only five practices this spring um, that I kind of really focused on because of the offense with Coach Bobo. And you saw some flashes both with Kevin and Deshaun for his guys that are coming back. So I like what I see there. You know, fortunately, not able to work with them. I don't know when we will be able to work. So it'll be more mental going forward. Um, the addition of Adam Prentice, I think, will play a big role in the offense, you know, going into the fall. So those are some guys that you just study here and say, okay, they have some skill, they have some abilities. Now let's get together at some point and working together trying to refine that. Thank you. Back to Pete Acabelli, AP. Des, what uh, can fans expect out of Des Kitchings' coached running backs? What's your style? What do you like to see out of your running backs? Well, I think <clears throat> any of my former players will tell you that I'm kind of an easygoing guy, but I'm obviously ultra competitive. And um, I demand a lot of my guys push them harder. You know, the goal is to make practice harder than what the game would be. So, you know, from the time we step on the practice field to the time we leave of just demanding the most from them so that on Saturday, it's just second nature for them to go out and compete. Let's go John Hart. Who's, who's under the name John Hart? Yes, right here from Augusta, Georgia. Uh, hey, Coach, like I mentioned, we're here, over here in Augusta. You mentioned being from Wagner in Aiken County. How much of a draw was that for you? How much family do you still have in that area? And what does uh, it mean to you to be able to coach so close to home? Yeah, so, I mean, both my parents are retired and still living in Wagner. I have a, a younger sister who lives in Wagner, older sister that lives in, in Charleston, the, in the Hanahan area. So, you know, I, I've always come back home and in recruiting because I've always recruited some part of South Carolina, getting a chance to see them. But again, you got University of South Carolina, SEC, I think a lot of that speaks for itself. And when this opportunity presented itself, it was hard to say no to. Other questions for Des? Again, use the little hand signal so I know um, on the computer that, that you have a question for him. All right, Chantel. Hey, Coach. How are you doing? Yeah, how are you doing? Uh, what's it been like? Because the staff is still relatively new itself and was just put together. Um, what has it been like during this period to try and get to know, um, you know, the current staff members? Well, I think one of the things that's been an easier transition for myself is that I've already had a prior relationship with some of the guys on the staff, you know, particularly on the offensive staff. I've known Coach Wolford before. Actually, uh, my wife, brother, and Coach Wolford played college football together at Kansas State, so there's a little familiarity there. I've known Coach Bobo, Coach Cox, you know, Coach Bentley from back when he was at Burns High School and I was coaching at Furman. So those guys I've had some relationships before with. And then on the defensive side of the ball, I mean, I've run into different guys out recruiting, from T. Rob to Coach Peterson, Coach Rocker. You know, in this coach profession, when you're out recruiting, you run into different guys and you establish relationships and you keep in communication or you see them on the opposite sideline on Saturday. So with all that being said, it's made that transition a lot smoother. Uh, let's go to Ben Briner. Uh, hey, hey, Coach. Uh, welcome to South Carolina. Uh, I wanted to ask just what kind of it has the – what was the hiring process like – from your end, and have you, had you uh, before getting hired, had any have any occasion to come down and, and look around sort of the facility and that kind of stuff? Well, you know, it goes back to February, actually, you know, when the first communication started um, with Coach Muschamp and myself. You know, and after that, you know, he even invited me back for spring practice if I was available, and I actually did. I came down, I think it was uh, practice five, the fifth practice of spring ball right before spring break. I just came out and watched and, uh, you know, came back to Raleigh and was kind of just going about things on a normal basis. And then obviously the quarantine hit. And then next day I know I'm receiving a phone call from Coach Muschamp saying that he's probably going to have a position of come available that Coach McClendon, you know, may be leaving to, to go to Oregon. And then once all that was finalized, he called him with the offer. And, I mean, it was easy to say yes. Hill McGranahan. Hey, Coach, uh, what are some of the, 
criteria you look for when you're out recruiting running backs, evaluating running backs, and obviously there'll probably be some specifics that, that Coach Muschamp and, and Coach Bobo look for, but what are some of the things that, that you kind of try to look for as you're evaluating your position? Yeah, certainly. And, you know, in my past, the successful guys I've had have been guys that, one, are mentally tough, um, and that's not something that you can measure by watching a kid, obviously getting to know them and the recommendations, but the athletic part of the kid as well, um, the speed, the size, the physical attributes, you know, and bottom line as a running back, his objective is to score touchdowns. You know, if a kid struggles to do that in high school, he's not going to be able to do it in college. So, you know, he's got to, he has to be a guy that has the ability to do that. I mean, and, and a college running back is, is the starting point of an offense. I know we talk about quarterbacks, but in particular in this league where you have to be able to run the ball consistently, you got to have guys that can break tackles and create explosive plays. So those are the things I'm looking for, you know, and really love guys that play both sides of the ball, which doesn't happen as much in high school anymore. But if a kid's playing both sides of the ball, just showing ultra competitive that way, if he's a multi-sport kid, so you can see him competing in a different arena, I think all those things just kind of ties into his intangibles as a player. Jeff Owen, Spurs and Feathers. Uh, Coach, I'm wondering in your conversations with uh, Coach Muschamp and Coach Bobo, how, how much uh, did you talk to them or did they talk to you about the emphasis on the running game and how important it's going to be to this offense? Well, I, th I think that's any offense, right? You run to win and you throw to score, you know, kind of a philosophy there. But if you just look at the history of uh, Coach Bobo and his offenses, right, running the ball has been a feature part of it. And he's had good tailbacks in the past that were able to do that. And also, I mean, running the football and, and being balanced helps helps your defense. It helps the team. It helps the physicality of the team in practice. If that's a point of emphasis. So we all have the same beliefs in that. Uh, Colin Taylor's up next from Gamecock Central. Hey, Des. Um, you kind of talked a little bit about Marshawn um, and Bavina as advertised. Just what specifically have you seen on film from him and what kind of excites you about getting to coach him? Yeah, he has some juice in his legs. You know, uh, he's a kid that, you know, makes a cut and gets vertical very fast. Um, you saw him breaking a couple of tackles, you know, very limited in pass, but just there's some intangible things you see there that says this guy's got it, you know. And not to say the other kids didn't either, but he, he just flashed on film those couple of practices in spring. Ben Briner. Uh Coach, uh, Th Thomas Brown, your, your predecessor, had sort of a, a two-back kind of philosophy. Is that something that you should subscribe to? Or are you more of a as many backs as you have, you'll rotate them all? Do you have any sort – I guess do you have any sort of base philosophy in that front? Well, if there's – you know, obviously, if you got a guy that can tote the mail, then let's, let's let him tote the mail. Um, but at the same time, you see it across football, even in the NFL, the two backs just kind of limit some of the hits on guys and the wear and tear. Uh, so I think there is a, a need for that, especially if you have the depth in your room to do that and if you keep guys fresh. But if there's a guy that's in a rhythm and he's toting the rock and he's being productive for us, we're going to ride him, you know, and then give him some spells there um, along with that. So I like to think we're going to have some depth in our room that we can be able to rotate a couple of guys, you know, and getting guys through the first, second, third quarter, and then the fourth quarter, let's go lean on them with somebody that's really been consistent and productive. Let's go to Hale McGranahan. Uh, have, have you had a chance to look at Rashad Amos and Zaquandre White uh, on film or maybe in the past? Do, do you know much about those yeah, guys? Yeah, yeah. so I, I remember uh, Zaquandre actually when he was down at, at Florida State and playing against him and excited about him coming on board as well because he's dynamic. You know, you're talking about a guy that can go score a touchdown for you in a hurry. Um, he's a guy. And then Rashad Amos actually uh, last fall, um, we even looked at him some. And by the time we started moving forward with it, he'd already committed to, uh, to South Carolina. So I have some knowledge of him. I think he has some, some good tools as an athlete, as a, as a ball carrier, a guy that can win in space and, again, be able to score touchdowns. So the addition of, of those two guys is only going to uh, create more depth and competition in that room. Let's go to Eric Boynton. Yeah, hi, Coach. Um, you, someone asked you earlier about coming home to coach close to your – your hometown. I kind of wanted to ask you something along those same vein, if there was any sentimental value coming back to coach in South Carolina, the same state as Furman, where you played and also started your college coaching career. Well, you know, 
year 16, so it, it just cycles that way to have opportunity to. I mean, the sentimental values as a coach this time of the year uh, in general, we're, we're working 24-7. But just to know that if I want to get home and see my parents in the event, they're getting older and something was to happen, I'm 35, 40 minutes away. So I, I believe that's the sentimental value in that. Now let's go to John Whittle. How quickly do you feel like a, a running back can – get in into the rotation and, and start for you how how much preparation do they have are you are, are you nervous about potentially playing a freshman or or just how, how do you view that experience factor no I'm not nervous at all um because I've had some success in my past of playing true freshman um now the challenge will be this year is just how much time do we have to get them prepared relative to years uh, prior you know so after May 7th when I could start having on um, these Zoom uh, meetings with the guys and start talking some football, at least mentally getting them up the, up the par. And the physical piece just have to, you know, believe that they're doing what they're supposed to do while they're away. And then when they get back with our strength coach, Coach Jackson, fine-tuning them in, into conditioning. But a lot of it's going to take place during practice as well. I mean, some of that conditioning is going to happen in practice this year. Go to Phil Cornblut. Phil. Thank you, Steve. Hey, Des, and uh, welcome back to South Carolina. Um, I know you're you're familiar with the Gamecock program being just across the border. What do you think about uh, South Carolina football program from what you saw from across the border, uh, competing against them on the field, um, four players, what they have built, and what uh, Will Muschamp is, has done so far and what he's trying to do with the program? Yeah, you know, the, the name University of South Carolina does have some impact in the state of North Carolina, obviously from a recruiting standpoint. You know, I can't remember the exact rank, but I think they just signed an 18th ranked class. So that's gonna bring some more talent to the program and just keep ascending the program um, to a championship level. I mean, that's the goal. That's why we're here to, to try to get it to a championship level. So there's a lot of respect for South Carolina. You know, again, going against them in 2017 was, was a good matchup there in, in, uh, in Charlotte that went to the fourth quarter and uh, just continue to build on those, those aspects. Ben. Hey, Coach. Um, when, when you jump into, you know, a recruiting operation and, and kind of midstream, do you come in and, and have kind of a hand in reorganizing the running back board and that kind of thing? Or a lot of it is a lot of it just, you know, jumping in on the work that's already been done and getting acclimated before you kind of start having, uh, I guess, an impact on those boards? Yeah, just really jumping in where, where it's established and then seeing it and if there's anybody else that I've – may have known of that they didn't have on the board to present him. But for the most part, just with the regional ties of who the kids they've been recruiting, there was already some familiarity with them. Colin? Yeah, Des, kind of sticking with recruiting a little bit, but how has the reception been from the guys that you've been able to talk to um, so far in the last couple of days? And how do you try to maybe sell them on South Carolina? What are some of the pitches you've been able to discuss with them? Yeah, and you know, the, the – uh, the response and feedback has been, has been good. And, you know, just presenting the facts. I mean, I don't try to sell anything, just presenting the facts of what the University of South Carolina has to offer, you know, the brand, the caliber ball every Saturday in the SEC, the resources that the university is now providing the student athletes that are going to be better than some other universities. Um, and that for those kids to see that, and more importantly for the parents, I think the, the program itself has – some good kids in the program, you know, that I've obviously known about from recruiting. And a lot of the players sell the program. You know, we present the facts of what they have, but the players within the program is going to sell the program. And then, you know, getting out here this fall and winning games. Pete? Uh, first, I want to say I'm really impressed by the breadth of the some of the beards here on this call. They're very impressive during this time in quarantine. Uh, Des, I mean, speaking of the quarantine, I'm sure you may have already begun some of this when you were at NC State, but how much is this year going to be, I don't know, coaching, counseling, mentoring these guys through what they're going through and some of the things that we don't know what we're going to be going through yet? Yeah, you know, I think initially when this started, even for my wife and I with our kids in the homeschool, like the first couple of weeks, you say, okay, let's go. This is what we've got to do. And you hit it running. And then you kind of hit a wall because you don't know when the end is. And so I think right now for us as Americans and even our kids, it's just fighting through this little wall here 
because there's really not a, a end date in sight per se. So, you, you know, you don't know when is this going to come to an end and you try to fight complacency. And that's one of the things we talk about with our kids right now that are, that are at home is that we can't get complacent. You got to continue to stay active, stay conditioned because you don't know. We could get a call in two weeks saying, hey, we're back at work and you got to be ready to go. And there's no catch up time. So hopefully that answers your question there. Any other questions for Des? Oh, there's John Whittle. Hold on a second, John. All right, go ahead. What's been kind of your go-to quarantine activity? What, what have you been doing with the family? What, what's been your release? Well, I think we've gone through every board game known to mankind right now. Um, you know, my youngest, he kind of enjoys a little bit of golf. So we go out to the driving range a couple afternoons. And then both my boys uh, play baseball. So there was there was a park that was open that we can go hit some ground balls and pitch to them, different things like that. But it's now resorted to bicycle rides. I mean, I think I rode around our neighborhood enough times to know it back and forth. So. Anything else for Des? Everybody good? All right. 